Can you drive stick? No, I could. <laughs> for, I could for I could for three weeks. Okay. And then the car broke down, and I never did it again. <laughs> Is that allowed in Detroit? I thought in Detroit you like. I don't think. Do they have automatic cars? I thought you had to drive stick in Detroit. Yeah, I mean, it's a uh, it's a uh, unwritten rule. Let's say. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass, and today I'm joined by Spencer King, the writer and director of Time Now, which is releasing in theaters non demand on October 26, 2021. We're going to talk to him in just a second, but first, let's check out the trailer. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. Jenny, hello. It's your Aunt Joan. And I think you need to be here, honey. Oh, I've missed you, baby. Hey. It's easy to be here when it's too late. Was he alone? He was with a friend. You two are close. Brothers. I would trade places with them if I could. What else did he say? He was worried about you. Dad, what would you do if you found out someone hurt one of us? So thanks so much for joining me. This is Spencer King, the writer and director of Time Now, which is releasing in theaters and on demand on October 26, 2021. It's a coming-of-age thriller that has a nice slow pace and some interesting characters and some fantastic cinematography. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, David. Awesome. Um, so, you know, you're the writer, so I always like to ask this question. You know, what inspired this story? Was it your own a bittersweet, I guess, homecoming to, to your hometown? Or was it, was this an experience that you just kind of dreamt up? Like, what, what inspired this story? Well, it was, it, for me, it was exploring some, some different emotions and grief was the one that really came to the forefront, obviously. Um, if you see the movie, it's just, it's slamming you in the head with grief and everyone in the film is kind of dealing with it in a different way. And that's something that's always interested me is just how people, uh, how people, react to that how grief changes people have one moment you know you can go from being one person to a different person and a split second with something happening like that in your life so that's what that's what really it started with with me was you know dealing with that with myself and um and the exploration of that through this lead character jenny and everyone that she touches in this film and that's an interesting point about how it can kind of go from, you know, your life can go from one vector, you know, one state to another so quickly, because that does seem to be a lot of what the film focuses on. It's kind of, there's a lot of buildup and a lot of, of you know, I guess, background that, that's built in. But then there seem to be these moments in the film where people's situations, their statuses, they just change very quickly, um, you know, kind of in the blink of an eye. So I think it's interesting that, I, mean, I guess that makes sense. That's what you were going for when you were kind of writing this film. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for picking up on that. Um, and the film is based in Detroit. I don't know, are you are you from Detroit, or did you just kind of like the idea of a city that kind of went into, I guess, a spiral, for lack of a better word, and has slowly kind of built itself back up into this, uh, in a kind of a new look or a new place to live? Yeah, well, I lived in Detroit, so I lived in Detroit for about five years, and I was that's kind of where I started my film journey, um, and I. Uh, and yeah, I'd been working with the crew there and we'd been building a real good rapport. So there was, and I was still living in Detroit at the time that we made this film. So it was a no brainer. This film was never going to be taken place anywhere else. Even yeah, though. Yeah. And I mean, I, I thought it was, I, I liked the, the, the kind of the parallels in there about how, you know, I assume this is intentional where, you know, like Jenny's character had kind of gone in a spiral and has, had built herself back up and Detroit also, there was all these comments about how the city has changed so much and how, and I think, uh, I think Joan makes a comment where it's like, you know, this is such a different, this is a different looking place than when your mom wouldn't let you come here at night alone or something like yeah. that. So. No, definitely. And it is something where, uh, so many people abandoned Detroit for so long and they, you know, they might've been 10 minutes away and go to Detroit, you know, once or once a year, once every two years and stuff. And there is a thing when, you know, Detroit is starting to bring itself back up definitely over the last decade or so. And uh, yeah, when people go back, there's definitely that aspect of like, man, I remember when you, when I, when my parents told me I can walk around here and stuff and, uh, and yeah, it's, it's more, and it's not even that the city is fully changing all the time. It's also like perspectives of people are changing. You know, people, 
there's this like, you know, it's like so funny how we're influenced so easily in our culture by what people tell us, how they tell us to feel. And there's, you know, people growing up there, like some, or growing up outside of there, you know, maybe we're told not to go down there. And now it's a thing where people are saying it's cool to go down there. So people will go back, you know, so it's an interesting dynamic. Yeah, and I also kind of love how it's, it's kind of, opposite of i think what gen like in general i think society is becoming less about like hey kids you can go out and run around because everyone's i don't, I don't know if they're afraid or if, or if maybe kids are just inside more whereas it sounds like in detroit it's kind of the opposite you're like well you know now it's safe you can all go out and play it kind of is a it kind of harkens back to a different time or just a different mentality which i liked as well yeah maybe get off instagram um so i also i really like the cast i especially like claudia black she was awesome in this film so i guess how did she get attached i loved her character because she added so much like levity and just kind of personality to to the overall uh, story. Yeah, I really don't know what what this film would have looked like without her. She uh, and not just you know from having a different person play that role. It's like she she added an air of uh, of professionality to the set that radiated through you know through every department of the crew and the cast. And when you know she's there and she's you know handling herself the way she can, it's hard to really. You know, it's hard to really screw off and cut corners and stuff. Um, she, you know, she's amazing. And I hope that I get the honor to work with her again. I also like, like her character felt so natural. Like she, she was just kind of like the glue, uh, kind of glued scenes, glued characters together. She would, you know, if there was an awkward transition, she would make it feel less awkward or kind of help with the kid. Was that writ was that part writing part her just improvising somewhere in between how, how did that kind of natural character grow well she was yeah the character was always supposed to be the bridge between the two worlds you know we've got this suburban world that uh where helen and uh and jenny's dad jeff and uh you know that whole that whole world and then joan is like you know she knows her way in there and then she very much like Gonzo, you know, Gonzo was kind of that bridge and she's kind of picking up. I, I you know, in my view, I, I view that when uh, in the years before Gonzo's death, because, you know, there was a death prior, they're the they're triplets, their youngest brother died, or the, you know, one of their brothers died, Andrew. And there was this gray period where Jenny left and Gonzo was in Detroit. And I view Joan as a catalyst for Gonzo during that time period when she's in the city and stuff. So she's really, you know, she is that bridge and she's, she's bringing a lot of people together. Yeah. And I also love how she brought the, the, the kid in as well. Like her interactions with the kid were just so much fun. Maybe because I, I have children. It was just, I loved seeing those because those also felt very natural where, you know, they're in a tense situation. She's like, yeah. you, know, you want to go get some sugar or, or things like that. Or don't, don't, don't tell your mom this. Like that all felt so fun. Yeah. I tend to be pretty naively confident. And uh, I just kind of assumed everything would be okay with the kid. And I've never actually worked with children. I don't have much experience with it. I don't have any younger siblings. Um, but Claudia was so good with him on set as well. And uh, yeah, that performance was dictated a lot by Claudia and Eleanor. They were both, Eleanor so good with kids too. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was great. Yeah, it was really, it was really fun to have, like, because this film is, is very serious at times. And, you know, it was nice to have those moments to kind of break it up and, and make it feel kind of more homey or more personal uh, to, to, to just break up the drama, because there was a lot of drama in this film. So I, I love those little moments as well. Yeah. Definitely. And I also noticed that Claudia was driving stick. I can't drive stick. I assume you can. You're from Detroit. I assume everyone in Detroit can probably drive stick. Uh, was it tough to find someone that could drive stick or did she kind of just step up to that or was, was she actually driving stick or was that movie magic? I yeah. guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah. She was actually driving stick and she, I guess she has a lot of experience. I didn't know this, I guess in Australia, it's pretty common, especially when she was growing up there. And um, there was something, you know, I wish I could actually pull the word out of my head of what it actually was, but there was something with that stick that made it even more difficult than most stick shifts. It was like an older, it's some, I'm trying to figure out what it was, mm -hmm. but our AD, Brett Miller, who was another glue guy on this shoot that kept this thing together, he drives stick and he couldn't even drive that one. So no one could move this car, this thing, besides Claudia. Oh, wow. Claudia was like it was insane we literally have to like move this car like Claudia was helping us out like doing runs get this car places you know <laughs> and she's been doing it we've got an Alexa mini like hooked up to the side of it and she's like man you know there's an alternate dimension where things didn't turn out quite as well I think but uh we you know she held it together on this one 
And that car is still stuck wherever that last seat it was filmed in because no one can move it. Exactly. It's just it's just there permanently. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it looked it looked comically large, like like I don't know the short throw. I don't know what the right word is, but yeah, it looked like it was it was hard to get in the gear, and also the the movements were were large, and you had to be determined if you wanted to get it in the proper gear. Yeah, it's amazing that we that I mean you know you uh it, it's worth it visually. Those two cars were really. You know, it wouldn't have felt the same if we just had a Honda Civic or something like that. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, like, if, if I didn't catch that it was set in Detroit, like having those cars in that in this film kind of drives home where this is set. And also, yeah, they looked they looked beautiful. I mean, uh, uh, at least uh, Jones car was immaculately kept, which I, I really like seeing as well. Yeah, my goodness, they were. I think real Detroiters would have walked out of the, uh, the screen <laughs> if the cars weren't uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would have had an issue with your Detroit Union. Um, it's kind of speaking of Detroit, and how you mentioned that this is you, you kind of gathered local. I don't know if you gathered local talent or local cast, but you know, were the actors all Detroit based? Was it some mix uh, of them? You know, it seemed like this felt like a local type of production. So I guess what the where how how close was that for the cast and the crew? Well, the crew was fully Detroit, a hundred or fully Michigan, a hundred percent. The cast was, uh, you know, so Claudia is L.A. based, uh, Eleanor, uh, Zay, and Paige, who are Jenny, Cash, Tanya, they were New York, and then the rest were Detroit. So it was, you know, about, I'd say it's more than 50%, but the couple, the, the first couple of leads were, uh, they came into town. Yeah, well, they, they fit right in perfectly. Um, and, and then this film has, I guess, kind of an extreme ending. I don't want to give it away, but uh, it has like a, a more extreme ending than I was expecting uh, yeah. from this film. Were there other drafts of that? Or was this kind of always the journey that you wanted to take? Or did you did you not know until maybe you started filming and kind of seeing how this story unfolded, how it was going to end? Well, so is this, this is spoiler free, this review? Uh, it's so much, yeah, so much in between. <laughs> I mean, okay, so... You know what, the, the, we, we, let's spoil it, because I'm, I'm interested, and so I'm going to say, it's, okay. it's, there's spoilers now, spoilers turned off. If you haven't seen the film, it's out digitally in theaters, so you can check it out. If you don't want to know what happens, yeah. turn it off right now. Okay, cool. Um, so the ending was, I mean, I wanted... The, the film is really about the gray area. Like, things aren't black and white in this world. You know, things, there's, there's, it's all about how you look at things, perspective. That's something I've learned. Um, you can, you know, we justify things in our head always. Like, you know, you, you know when you're doing it too. Um, and it, Jenny is, you know, we're, we're following her and we're following, she's a very unreliable narrator. And you don't really realize that until maybe like, you know, maybe some people are picking it up a little earlier than others, but, but um, you know, in that last scene is when you, uh, sorry, I wish I was in, I wish I had a room, a hotel room to do this in right now. Um, yeah, that really last fun. scene is really something that I wish, I wish that, you know, I, she's been building to become the type of person to be able to handle that, to be able to handle news like that and not snap, you know, mm -hmm. like she's had, she's been pushing stuff back and then she's finally throughout this film, she's kind of like, you know, she's pushing out of boundaries, she's opening up and she's trying to be and she's working towards becoming the type of person that can handle news in a way that she's not going to do something rash she didn't quite get there you know yeah. and it gets to the end and she's you know she's it's almost like she everything that has been that has happened to her she's she's found an outlet she's found a victim to take it out on and then cash calls her out for everything you know he really in the, that moment he he says it. he says you about you're about to abandon your son like what are you doing you know and like I, as a, you know, I'm thinking about them, like, you, do, Gonzo, you haven't seen him, and this whole film is about you haven't seen him, he doesn't know you, he's been trying to see you, you're not, you're not there for him, do you think he wants you to come into his life and kill his friend, that it was an accident, this was all an accident, like, mm -hmm. we're building this film up, you don't really know how, you know that, like, you start to realize, like, maybe it wasn't how it's being told, but it's, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways that I think the audience might perceive what Cash did. And I think um, then at the end, you find out like, man, it was just an accident, you know? It's like, uh, it's terrible. Um, it's terrible, like, you know, but does, does Gonzo want him to go to jail for this? Does he want his sister to murder him? I don't think so, you know? And then it's this moment and she's she's there. And, you know, there was, there was consideration to, 
I just don't think she's ready. She wasn't ready to, and she throws it all away. It's really, it's like, I'm not trying to compare myself to Shakespeare or something like that, but it's kind <laughs> of like Shakespearean in a way, just a tragedy all around. And that's something that, who knows, maybe I get, I, I feel like I'm a pretty upbeat, upbeat guy and everything I work on is so dark, man. Maybe it's just, maybe that's just how I uh, process certain things, but that's how I felt like this story was, was meant to go. And it's, uh, you know, meant to question, make you question how you're looking at things. Um, any relationship you have with your, you know, your partner, or your parents or something like when you're, when you are really passionate about feeling you're right and someone's wrong, you know, usually when you sit back and you take a moment, you can, you can see both sides, but um, yeah. Does that, does that, I, I know I kind of rambled there. That no, that's answer? perfectly fine. And yeah, like, like you yeah. said, like this was about kind of your exploration of grief. And so it makes sense that you would you have to go to some dark places. And even though you're a generally bubbly person, when you're going into that to explore it, you're going to have to go there. I, I think, you know, I, I was a little taken aback by that ending, but there are enough little breadcrumbs in the story. I think that you could see some of these, like it, it seems like Jenny loves her son, but she's not that attached. Like she's not, she's not that active with him because that's, and that's where, uh joan claudia's character is so so great and so fun to see but then you also get the flip side of well she's not really paying attention to her son except for little instances here and there yeah, um and also yeah you, you're, you know, she does kind of make some rash decisions so i think i think there's enough in there but i think people might have to watch it again to kind of see those after they see the ending and that's something that we talked about eleanor and i for a long time is like how maternal is she going to be with her son you know how mm -hmm. loving how there and there's moments where you see her like she walks in front of her son and stuff like that. And she, you know, it's kind of like she treats him like another person there in a lot of ways because she really isn't there yet. And yeah, we've got, we've got people throughout this film telling Jenny, like in, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but wake up, you know, like, look, look what you have around you. Mm -hmm. She never quite does it, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. And I guess that that might be one of the main lessons in the film is, you know, you kind of like appreciate the now, appreciate what you have and, and don't dwell on yeah, things. Totally. Totally. Um, so now I'd like to switch. I know we have limited time. I'd like to switch. I call it the lightning round. It's just lightweight questions about the film. I want to see how your experiences relate to things that happen in the film. You can feel free not to answer any of them. I won't be offended at all, but I try to keep them very answerable. So it's uh, lightning. It's no, I can't thank. Just quick response. You know, I, I like, I like quick responses, like but if you want to elaborate, this is your time. You are, you are free to elaborate as much as you want. Yeah. But you got to constrain me because I'll go off. So if you want, if you, if I need to follow some guidelines, I can do it. <laughs> no constraints is, is unplugged. Right. Uh, right, so the right. first question is, should be an easy one. I assume. Uh, can you drive stick? No, I could, <laughs> for, I could for, I could for three weeks. Okay. And then the car broke down and I never did it again. <laughs> is that allowed in Detroit? I thought in Detroit, you like, I don't think, do they have automatic cars? I thought you had to drive stick in Detroit. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a uh, unwritten rule. Let's say. <laughs> um the next question is do you drive a classic car i assume some sort of like 1978 thunder car. what i drive american but okay. not classic maybe not classic. is 2014 classic i don't think so i don't think yet uh no although that does feel like forever ago given the last couple of years yeah. we've had but i don't think that's classic yet <laughs> yeah, i don't know this uh you know first paycheck straight to a camaro or a mustang 60 67 baby blue right. that's what i do Powder all right blue. well I, I can't wait to see that in a future movie Right. Um, do you have any siblings? I have a stepbrother. So okay. well, we, we grew up together. He is my brother. Yeah. Awesome. And are you the oldest or is he the oldest? He's older than me. Okay. Um, if you were a painter, what style of what style would you paint in? Well, I am a painter. Oh, I, no, I'm not a painter, but I paint. And I used okay. to be, there was a time where I was maybe a painter. I went to art. I was, I was, a, I did fine arts in college actually. So I did a lot of painting and stuff and I, um, abstract, but out of necessity. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's kind of where I think I would fall. I would be, yeah. you know, not to say that abstract art isn't difficult, but I feel yeah. like the, the lack of recognizable shapes would, would assist my painting ability. You should have seen my paintings in figure painting class. We'd have a model actually, and everyone's looks exactly the same. And mine is like blotches of circles and stuff. And just thinking differently. That's that's that, that's right. Yeah. That, that's all you gotta do. You're breaking down the art into some new form. Yeah. And the, uh, sorry, the others didn't look the same. They all looked very on point. They were all mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Uh, well, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. So yeah. shout out uh, college for greatest studies. <laughs> Next one. Can you rap? Yes. All right. 
did you write i guess i guess you wrote did you write the the music or was that a collaboration in this film no that was uh that was um my friend in detroit tobin suave and uh and zay plays cash they worked on it together um do you so both uh cash uh wrapped under you know a stage name and then um gonzo drew under a, a sta- you know a pseudonym so have you ever have you worked under a pseudonym no okay. but i don't actually rap i just mean it in a way by like when my friends if people are freestyling i can do oh, yeah. it but, yeah, no. but, but no that, yeah no no I, I don't have a pseudonym <laughs> um have you ever been locked when your last name's king it's like it's hard to it's hard to give that up (laughs) king yeah king's a pretty good last name so um have you ever been locked out of an iphone or out of your iphone yeah oh no like like you you didn't you guessed it too you you didn't get the password right and then it it didn't let you in or yeah oh can you imagine that yeah sorry to hear that hopefully hopefully you remembered it eventually but uh if not yeah my brain is just does its own thing occasionally <laughs> uh the last question is uh they describe jenny as an old soul i think i think uh joan does would you describe yourself as an old soul um i think i've been I, i've had people tell me that hmm. so i think that's the answer i don't know how i would describe it but if, if other people say it then that, that's that's a pretty good indication yeah uh, and so the film is out, it's, it's, I guess it's premiering at the Austin Film Festival, it's out in theaters and digitally. Um, so now that the film's out, you're promoting it, I imagine, but then yeah. after that, do you have other projects you're working on, other other things that uh, people can look forward to? Um, well, if you're interested in seeing stuff right now, I've got a documentary on YouTube that, I'm, that I made uh, about a year ago, or released about a year ago, that is also in Detroit. It's on, it's called The Story of Dex Osama, which is about a rapper in Detroit, Dex Osama who uh, was tragically murdered and we, you know, we, uh, we follow his, his trajectory and how, you know, he, it was something where the, no one really covered him when he, when he passed away. It was, they didn't really, no one really took a deep dive. So this is a deep dive into him and how he almost made it. He was signed by, he was about to get signed by Meek Mill's record label. And, um, and just a couple days before his debut album was supposed to drop, he, uh, he was murdered. So you can check that out. Yeah, support support Dax and his legacy. It's on YouTube. All right. Well, that that, that sounds like a, a another bookend to your generally seems like exploration of grief and, and maybe darker darker subject matter. So I, I do see the, the this like bubbly person who's looking into kind of some more darker aspects of society. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Well, awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. This is Spencer King, the writer and director of Time Now, which is uh, out, I guess, I think now, I, I think it's out right now on theaters and digital. So you can check it out uh, however you want to. If you want to go to theaters, you can see if it's playing near you, or if you would rather get it digitally, you can rent it and watch it in the comfort of your own home. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much, David. Have a good one. All right. You too. That was Spencer King, the writer and director of Time Now, which is a coming-of-age thriller that releases on, in theaters and on demand on October 26, 2021. If you liked this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot make sure all my new content goes straight to you. And please check out my other content. I have other interviews. I have movie reviews, unboxing videos, and a weekly movie recommendation. Thank you. Thank you.